What if you, you know who you are, you, like, you know what? I'm a cheater. I can't, I can't be messing up nobody else's life. I'm, I'm going to stay by myself, fuck, have a good time. And then when I think I'm ready to settle oh, down, okay. I'll do that. But to get married and then um, I got the co-host coming to you because you, if, if I'm, that's my show. You coming to the house, mm-hmm. you know, you got your husband. Y'all all, we can, we in the living room kicking and drinking. Y'all by the pool, act like I go to the bathroom. She in the girl's bathroom. I tiptoe in, bend over, fucking real good. We go back out by the pool and your husband and my wife, this shit is crazy. But this shit sound exciting to me. I like that type of shit. <laughs> what, the thrill? Yeah, the thrill. That's just me. But I wouldn't do certain things now because the the way I move in life, I, I don't, I, I don't want to risk anything. How do how, how do you think that? And the thing is, a, a lot of people do dumb shit because they don't understand the risk involved. They don't. No, they understand. do understand. You think so? Oh yes, they do. Because I was one of them. You think about the consequences afterwards until you get into so much trouble and you realize, man, you got to stop this shit. But what happens in life? Some people never get a chance to stop it. They either puts them in jail or dead or broke. Or broke. Mm. Yeah. I don't, consequences do it anyway. That's what I'm talking about. Like because I, I'm thinking we'll go back to uh, somebody cheating on their spouse. You know, you have a, a home with your spouse and your kids, and but that's when is it really the best time to cheat? When is that? When you got a wife and kids at home. Okay, okay, break is it there, down. Is there something about cheating that you know you got a family at home? It does something for you. It, does it does it heighten the thrill? Is that what it is? I don't I don't know if it heightens the thrill. It just does something to you. When you got a woman and you ain't got a, another woman, it's it's not the same. But when you got a woman and you got this other woman here, even your fuck game is a little bad. I think you stroke. You know, you get a couple more strokes. Is it? Yeah, oh. I just think that you come home more happy. You start get you, you know you, you you go on more trips. So okay, if if we go down that path. Uh, using that logic, that means that women should step out so they can be a little happier and be happier in the home, well, right? Well, I don't think you understand what you just said. Most women have been stepping out for years. That's why a lot of men are not the father of the babies <laughs> that when they go and they go to um to get a DNA test for child support, that's a huge number that nobody talks about. And even Maury, for years, nobody's been paying attention to Maury. Maury been putting holes on blast. Since 1979. Yeah, I think it's still coming on. 79. I'm just saying. I'm just using that number. <laughs> More have been putting women on, on blast for years, and the woman would be sitting right there with you and watch the facial expression, if you can remember. And the guy, he crying because he wanted to be the father. They look at the girl. She's serious because she in her head talking about, I don't really know who the fuck the father is. This nigga is like, I hope I'm the dad, but, but he wants it so bad. More comes out. He has that expression on his face. And he reads, baby, and you're not the father. He crying, the kid, the boy crying. They go back to the seat with the girl, this bitch done left. She ran down the hallway. But they never give credit to the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> he was on it. <laughs> Yo, for him to take that motherfucker off that thing and, and he run, run all the way down. <laughs> and not just run, he catch up with the bitch. <laughs> He ran all the way down. Yeah, the- no, he caught up with her. She had a five minute head start. <laughs> this bitch is on 125th Street, <laughs> and this motherfucker will run her down with warp speed. And they never talk about how long that cord is. Listen, when I go to Home Depot, no batteries. No, when I go to Home Depot, I say, like, "Can I get the same cord they got on Maury? Because that's a long ass cord." Oh man, it's just hilarious. I think that's that's psychology. I think. It, I think a man wants a woman to, like, you get out the shower and you put something nice. You would like your woman to say, "Baby, you look really good." If a bitch, if I got out the shower and I put something on, bitch, don't tell me I look good at least eight times. If you don't see me put something nice on, I, I, I can't fuck with you. Wow. Yeah, because it's not that. It's not that. <laughs> You should always tell your dude he looks good. Are you crazy? No, no, no. no. I'm just saying straight out the shower. I, I do. No, no, no. I don't mean literally straight out the shower. Oh, I, I get mean, compliments. if he's going to the store, he's doing something, you know, baby, baby, did you get a haircut? Oh, my God. Your face is cold. I'd be saying that. I'd be like, you, did you tan? You yeah, that's darker. what you got to do. Yeah, you got to compliment him. And women should give their men head every morning. <laughs> if you want a nigga to love you, 
get up early in the morning while he sleep, turn him over slow, and give him some head. Not one time. Every day. Every morning. And I guarantee you that nigga would love you. Yeah, he's still gonna cheat though. So No, 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 no. He won't cheat. His psychological ability to cheat won't be the same because once a nigga dick come and he can't get hard, he ain't he might be attracted to you, but he don't feel that. Nah, <laughs> 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 yeah, she was cute. Yeah. Cause that it's going out you. And a woman should be a little slutty in bed. You know, be nice, but you know, if you ain't moving, your legs are, you ain't emotion, you ain't scared. I, I like to date women who are loud I'm in the hotel room. Cause I need the front desk to applaud when we walk out. I need what the Yo, it's fucking fantastic. Flowers, rice, all that kind of shit. Not rice. Yeah. I remember one time at Westchester Hotel, Renaissance. I checked in. I had been waiting for someone to be fucking in the hotel rooms because the fucking is going down. I try to worry. I I really be at people's doors listening (laughs) to see you. It's going down tremendously. So this one day I sit on my back, got my bags, and I hear this. You know, it takes you a minute to hear where it's coming from. And they in the room next to I said, oh, shit. And I sat down to get comfortable, and they had stopped. So that next morning, um, I was checking out. I wrote them a note. I put my bags by the elevator. I wrote a note. I said to the young lady, I said, you were amazing last night. To the guy, um, you came too soon. I wish you all the best. I slid on the door and ran to the elevator just in case somebody was walking to the bathroom and saw that paper like, who the fuck wrote this? I was gone already. You really did that? I, I truly did that. It's I don't fact. believe you. I put that on my children. I did that for <laughs> oh sure. Oh my God. Yeah, I did that. I like doing crazy shit like that. What's the guy, Maruno, Manunas? He was the head chairman of um, CBS. Oh, um, Moon. Les Nunes? Oh. Yeah, you, you heard his do? story? Let me tell you something. His payroll was so cold. He had a girl work in his office. Her only job was to come in and give him head at a certain time. When was this? The seventies? No, this is maybe eight eight years ago. Really? Yeah, this is when social um What's his name? the I'm Me Too movement up. was about to blow. It was really taking off. Chairman of CBS. Yeah, he's the chairman. Former chairman. So the reason why they threw him under, yeah. He was married to the Chinese lady oh, on Connie Chung. Yeah, he was married to her. Oh, now here's the cold part: why they went into his business because his service package when he retired was in the two hundreds of millions, and because they could get him off of a technicality about his behavior, they didn't have oh. to pay him. Oh, mm. yep. They, it yeah, it was a money play. They didn't have to pay him, so he lost two hundred something million. Oh. What about the other gentleman who was out here in New York who had um was on a show, Big Nose, and he had all the dildos and stuff in his office. Like he the, was he like a governor or I let um, that dude. He 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 got in trouble too. I remember that governor. But this guy was the actual um Good Morning America host back in the day. You know? No, not him. He's place for the NBA. But Marv Albert bounced back. He's still announcing NBA shows. Yep, sure. And with a toupee. Yeah, he did that. And he, when he came back, he came back with a toupee. He's doing his thing. But it's just to the men, stop risking your lives, please. And one for sure um, is really the great, great um, uh, R. Kelly for him to go out that way. Because when you look at his old stuff, videos, he was a true talent. Absolutely. He was a tr- he. I really feel he was the best R and B singer of any generation. He was that good, and I would love to have managed Prince too, because I'd have had Prince being just a love ballad. Prince liked to play all on rock band because he thought he was white, but <laughs> but if I could have got Prince in a nice little afro with them heels on, no, and the did heels. ladies ladies only tour and all he did was sex songs women wouldn't have to walk out the arena they were um, uh, flowing out on their pussy juices all the way back to their car prince really yeah prince was the prince was bad i remember having sex on 
one of Prince's songs in college. Um, Lady Cab Driver. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Lady a Cab Driver. Oh, that was the jam. Wait, you said college. Where'd you go? I went to Arizona State in Cal State Northridge. And you have your master's, right? Yes, I got it in 82. And so do you, do you feel, because it's in communications? Yeah, speech something? communication, yep. Do you, you think you, do you feel like you use that in oh, your Oh, absolutely. Career? I definitely have an advantage. Oh, that's nice. Uh-huh. Yeah, I definitely have an advantage. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that people will start to lean towards, like, having a brutal sense of honesty such that we don't have to deal with these types of, like, lying and conniving and cheating all of that in our relationships? What I've seen... At my age now, that what has begun will never stop. Oh, that's poetic. What has happened to the United States of America, the to the man and female, has detriment this country so bad that people don't pay attention and they don't see how China is not fucking with us, how Africa is not fucking with us, how Russia is not fucking with us, like. We are looked upon as being weak because we don't put our foot down to protect the children of the United States of America. We let our children run parents. They are getting sex changes before the age of 21. We are destroying their lives, and no one seems to take it very seriously. That's why when you listen to Uganda and how they pass the law of the LBGTQ, that is a crime Mm -hmm. to do that. And I know people want to have their self-respect and they should have the choices of what they want. And I'm not here to say either one is right or either one is wrong. I do know this. If 50 men was uh, a transgender, I call them, and 50 men were straight men, in 100 years, if you went to the gravesite, it would be 100 men lay here dead. They wouldn't say Mm -hmm. 50 transgender women and 50 men lay here. It would be 100 men Mm -hmm. died. And what um, people need to understand, Mm -hmm. you can't change um, how people think. You force people to make judgment in their decision. Give me an example, I'm trying to date you, and I'm like, come on, babe, I just bought me a brand new Bentley. And you walk outside, and he's like, that's a Toyota Camry. And I'm like, nah, bitch, you heard what the fuck I said. I said that's a... It identifies as a Bentley. Toyota Camry, yeah. <laughs> you're like, TK, listen, you're a liar. That's uh, 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 that's not no Bentley. I said, nah. That, you know, that's a, I, I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm saying this is a Bentley, but it's really a Toyota Camry. Mm-hmm. That's what the world does to the people with common sense. Oh, it plays in your... They play in your face. Yes. It, it, you, do we... Right. We... No is not true, but to save face, we bow down to something that we know in our heart is not right. Mm. And that 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 does something to you mentally for the rest of your life. So you don't think that these kids have a chance in hell then, do you? No. And the reason why we have a few that's going to make it, but they're teaching the kids all the wrong things in life. The world has changed right underneath us. No one's in, in, the, in these schools, in public schools, let's mm-hmm. go with them, are teaching about artificial intelligence. Nobody's teaching about coding, not understanding that trucks are going to drive themselves. They're already phasing out the the, um, the people that work at McDonald's. They, you, mm-hmm. Now you go in there to do a kiosk and you press what you want. And they're going to have people, they're going to have robots back there in a minute to make your burgers. So there's nothing. The middle class is going to be gone. Rent. It's steady going high, getting higher. A bag of chips is down there three dollars and ninety five cent. You know, um, yeah, McDonald's so closed yesterday. their office because yeah. they about to have a massive layoff. So it's and people don't see it, you know. And it's it's, it's not scary. It's like, what do you do? How can you help people to become better people? Then uh, social media is not paying influencers anymore. What do you mean? Yeah, Instagram. Talking about reels, right? Facebook, yeah, real. They not paying them when they stopped. Yeah, some people's making millions. They're not paying anybody, or they they changed uh, the rap. It's a rap, and I believe I you because at my grocery store, 
at my grocery store, they can't keep nobody there. And I talked to the manager and she said, nobody wants to work. They come in. They was even giving out bonuses to get you in. And they say, they work a week, get that money, and then quit. Mm-hmm. And, the, but, and the thing is that a lot of employers, because my husband was complaining about this over the weekend, a lot of employers, they're paying above average. So they used to be good a dollar above right. uh, minimum wage. Now they're three dollars and eighty cents yeah, above. They don't want to work. You can you can't keep them, but once you go that high, you can ne- you can never go back. Right. So it's it's a hard line to manage for them to determine. Like, do we want to keep pushing the money up, and we still can't keep people? Yeah, man, it's crazy. I think it's probably the gig economy. You know, because a lot of people have more flexibility with making money to live. Maybe not the best life, but they can live like doing gig economy stuff. So we are introducing this new thing on the show, like for our, our broader cast, mm-hmm. where we at, we're asking our guests these these three questions. So I want to know what your uh, responses okay. are. I got a feeling they're going to be funny. Okay, let's see it. Let's see it. All right. So if there is any one person, dead or alive, that you could have a one-hour dinner with today, who would it be? Mm. And it can't be yourself. Nelson Mandela. That's interesting. Yeah, Nelson Mandela. The reason why, because when he got out of prison, I was his um, MC at the LA Forum in Los Angeles, oh, wow. California. But we never got a chance to really talk. So I really would like to have um, had a nice conversation with Nelson Mandela. I remember when he got out. Like yeah, it, was, it, was, it was big. A little kid, yeah. Yeah, it was big, and um, he went through so much with his wife. Then you know she started. They got a divorce, and he. This man went and did. All these years, and get out and get a divorce of his wife, which fucking was hilarious. It was her. It doesn't matter who it was; they got a divorce. They did. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, don't know she story. got a divorce, so that's what I mean. So that's all. It's just one of the things. I'm getting off track. So okay, Nelson yeah, Mandela. Ahead. Okay, um, and what's your? If we had all the liquors and mixers and everything here right now today. What would be your? Favorite go-to drink? Oh, my drink is Louis the Thirteenth for sure. Oh, yeah, just straight. Yeah, just straight Louis the Thirteenth. Uh, on ice or? Um, straight up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. And last question is: If you knew you were gonna die this time tomorrow, mm. who would you have sex with? It would be an orgy. Mm-hmm. You know, it would be an orgy. I mean, you would be in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, who else? I would have Halle Berry. Who else would I rock in that thing? Not, uh, it ain't too many people. And I know a lot of people. My mind just a blank of who. Oh, um, cool. no, 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 no. I'm Raquel Welch. Oh, wow. Yeah, Raquel Welch is gorgeous to me. Um... No Nia Longs or... Nah, Nia Long don't do it for me. Uh, when I see it, she's a nice girl. Mm-hmm. But Nia Long, Nia Long ain't, don't have a little slut in her. She has no slut in her. You know, you got a little slut in you. I see I you do? Slut in you. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> uh, well, your uh, slutter meter is right. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, I already know. <laughs> I'm good at what I do. I know. T to the motherfucking K. <laughs> yeah, but it would be an origin. I would have to tag some people out. You know, time you go next, I would have to do something like that. Okay. Well, that's a good one. We'll see who else going to say orgy because <laughs> that was nobody's answer the other day. Yeah, it would be an orgy. Okay. Um, well, let me see here. Um, oh, you know what? What do you think about the statistics? Well, actually... You know how they say that a uh, majority of black men marry black women, right? Mm-hmm. Based on your life and your travels, do you feel like that's what you see? Yep, absolutely. That's what I see the most. Okay. I see black men dating a lot of white women. And I've learned, I've just grown numb to it, so to speak. And just figure that's the way of life, I guess. What, uh, inter- interracial relationships? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I do know how people can get on your nerves. So if you can meet somebody to make you happy, go, now, will I do it? No, I, I, I will fuck a white woman. 
if I wouldn't marry her, I wouldn't, I couldn't do that to myself. She would have to be so fucking gorgeous and super rich, you know, because most men. You'd be a stepman. Yeah, most men um, date leftovers in the white community. You, know, you never see most black men dating um, um, the first picks. women who fathers are super rich mm -hmm. or a king, you know, king's daughter. Top of the top. And I'm not saying that these girls are not nice, but you never really hear it. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. A leftover, we were talking about not top grade white woman. Top grade white woman is the women who are super, super rich. A left of a woman in general, I don't. I just think it's you know. It, it, I don't think it has a meaning. A leftover is a a person who's just not been chosen, but that's based on the man's individual thing to say to a female. Because I truly feel any woman could be in a relationship. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I do. Even if you're a big, it's not a no. I said any any relation, not the relationship she wants. We are never in the relationship that we really wants. Even her, even you, even me, whoever that we're with at that moment, that's not really the motherfucker you wanted to be with. It was really somebody else. It's just <laughs> that the person that you with just was more consistent than the other person. That person made you feel good about the person you really wanted because you wanted that person, but that person didn't really want you. And that's how life is. When you're texting someone, and that person that's texting you, she's texting someone, but that person don't want her either. Mm. It's deep. So you think we all settle? It's not that we settle. We find who makes us feel the best. Well, but that, so I, I guess it's not settling because you have to figure out what works for you. Yeah, and that's what I mean. What, 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 you got to figure out. What makes you feel? Because all at the end of the day, we want to feel good, right? As you get older, it's about sapiosexual. It's about conversation of the mind, right? If someone texts you, are they thoughtful and considerate to get back to you? Me, they didn't ignore your call. They didn't ignore you. That makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And then when you see them, do they do something for you? Like, ooh, you know? Yeah. And then based on who you are with me, a woman got to be emotional in bed. What is emotional in bed? Loud. Like? I got you gotta be loud. Like, you know, if I eat your pussy, I wanna I wanna hear you. I wanna hear it. I wanna feel it. I want, when you come, I want I want your pussy lips to actually push my shit back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanna feel that type of shit, you know? And that's what I want. Most men, that's why I always say, if a man really got a taste of good pussy, he 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 will move different through this world. Some men just think just fucking is fucking. And then some men fuck so much, they fuck themselves out of relationship. 